So I saw the leaked photos of the Nilfgaardian soldiers from the Netflix adaptation of The Witcher recently. Just like most people's opinion, I am disappointed, frustrated and let down by the poor quality of the costume design we're seeing. I am also unsurprised as the film industry has really fallen to its lowest levels in how they portray anything from fantasy genres. There are a few gems, but right now I want to concentrate on this abomination of design. All over the internet, the armour has been described as dickhead armour, scrotum armour or bin bag armour. All of which I think hits the nail on the head. All I think is going to the costume department and saying, You look at it! Hi. It's a shame because all the costume department need to really do is go to Google and look up Nilfgaardian cosplay or even Renaissance reenactment would be good enough. The level of detail cosplayers and reenactors go into their kits can certainly be movie quality. It would be nice if the film industry just did some proper research. I am boggled that this awful awful design even was suggested to be produced let alone actually be made to be put into the series. Of course the game version set up a good basis of the material culture which was reflected in the armour and clothing. The armour is not perfect however passes as a solid take on the Nilfgaardian culture. So with a bit of research and knowledge of how armour and clothing was properly done in the past I will redesign the Nilfgaardian soldier. Okay, so with the helmet, I had a few ideas. Now, what I ended up doing was almost a retelling of the game version. Uh, the reason why I did this was because it's the Nilfgaardian look was almost identified by the, the helmet and the black armour. The helmet looks quite like a 20th century World War II German helmet. Um, what I wanted to do, I had a couple of ideas, basically I was going to put in some imperialistic Roman look and perhaps look into salad design and see what I could do from there. So basically what I'm doing is tracing over the top and I'm basically going to do a redrawing over the top of this really bad costume design. So other ideas I had about the clothing was the 16th century Landsknecht style garments and I'm just adding in a little shield there that may be for the regiment of this particular Nilfgaardian and now I'm mucking around with the cheek pieces which I ended up abandoning. I wanted to put in a little bit of a Roman look, uh, imperialistic look, however it didn't really work out. The side guards or the drooping down side pieces of the salad type helmet did more than enough coverage of the side of the face and I'm just cleaning up the uh, line work here. I tried to clean it up as much as I can along the way just so it communicates quite nicely of what I'm trying to portray. So I am putting in a little bit of a feather holder there, maybe uh, he's he can put in his feathers and just also shaping up the clothing and I've decided to for the throat kind of protection I've added in a male standard which is very cheap for a, a standard professional soldier of the 16th century. Right, what else am I doing? I'm adding a little bit of roping around the edging of the armour pieces you see on the helmet on the side of the breastplate. And I'm just trying to define what the breastplate plate is going to look because I like that Maximilian style, specific German style corrugation on the plate. I'm messing around with little tiny details here. And the sun symbol of the Nilfgaardian Empire. So yeah, I wanted to create something that was sourced from historic uh, parts of the world, mainly Germany. Um, but I also wanted to have a slight fantasy twist of it. So this is definitely not a hundred percent historically accurate. However, it's functional and it works and it has a little bit of flavour of German styled armour from the early 16th century, probably about 15, 
20, 30, that kind of time period. So yeah. Just fixing up some of the line art here from the rough drawings that I did. And I decided to create the lower half of the sleeve to be quite close fitting and the upper part to be, you know, that kind of baggy slash look. Just because he's a professional soldier and, you know, can afford this kind of garment. And fixing up the folds, which is the skirt, uh, which goes below the cuirass main breastplate area. I am looking at what the game version did. And you can see that kind of placard style uh, V-shape going up. And also the usually have like a, a gorget or a, I think in this... In, in the game version, there is a, yeah, definitely a kind of gorget. And behind that is almost like a studded leather thing. So well, I wanted to avoid that and actually put in a proper breast, breastplate that would work functionally. Also added in the side sword and just fixing up the belt fittings here for his side sword scabbard. Nearly done. I'm just fixing up some of the face, some of the proportions and the line work. Add a little bit of corrugation to the top of the salad. I did like the shape of the salad in the end. It's kind of got that historical look. Yeah, just filling it in. Most of the line work's done. I did a couple of fixes even afterwards. And just adding the side of the standard, which I forgot to do. And there we go. There it is. And here's the ending result. Now, what I did like about this is the fact that it's got that blend of the different kind of garments, the looking into what the game version of the helmet is and just adapting it very slightly just so it looks and feels like it fits better towards the costume. It's definitely a functional costume. You can move about in this quite easily. Right, I shall leave it there. Let me know what you want me to do next and I'm happy to do another video of redesigning something. Maybe, I don't know, the King scarred armor from Game of Thrones or one of the Lord of the Rings armors maybe I don't know let me know in the comment section below and I shall catch you in the next one